This video is brought to you by Factor. Back in April of 2021, I reviewed an unassuming 3D anime called Poppy the Performer, a series of shorts that aired on a kids' network in Japan back in the early 2000s. It featured a cute little clown wearing a rabbit outfit, his doggy companion wearing pfft, underpants, uh what? Hell, even his clowny father with a silly mustache was there too. No doubt that this was a sweet and innocuous kid show that was safe for the whole family. Oh, you thought? <laughs> Poppy the Performer is cartoon violence incarnate. Raw, unapologetic, irreverent violence with a body count to match. This little clown, this little clown right here, oh, oh, he's evil. Either you look at him funny and he wants to kill you or he just wants to kill you because he's bored and your pain amuses him. Personally, I found the entire show to be an absolute delight. And I even got a little poppy toy in my P.O. box from a viewer. So I'm assuming that y'all enjoyed the series too. So of course I started to dig again and decided to check out another series from the creator of Poppy, Funny Pets. From what I was told, it too channels the same energy as Poppy. But here's my concern. Reviews for Funny Pets are pretty damn harsh. You got people on anime planets who just rip into the series and critically eviscerate it. Here. Let me quote a portion from this one review. <clears throat> At the start of every godforsaken episode, the, the sun and moon crash on some planet and move in with a whore. It's shown after a creepy full moon opens its mouth and spaceships pour out. The moon, probably the driver, is most likely high or drunk or both and gets them both stranded. Basically, it's nonsense, hardly important. Apart from that, you have wacky adventures of the trio doing stupid crap with the sun and whore doing some shit and the moon wanting in but can't because he's a creepy F. <laughs> I'm mean, right? Uh, that was a mean uh, voice I did. I don't care. Jokes aside, what I see before me is a challenge. To watch the entirety of Funny Pets. All 24 episodes on my Twitch stream and provide my genuine reactions and thoughts about the series. Will it be any good? Hell, is it even anything like Poppy? Or am I just getting my hopes up? For all I know, Funny Pets is completely different in tone, and I'm getting hyped up over nothing. According to my sources though, Funny Pets was just straight up canceled by the Japanese TV channel that hosted it, and also banned the creator from their network too. What? Really? What the hell happened in Funny Pets that was the final straw, but Poppy was okay? Literally, how is that even possible? No. Oh, okay. Well, let's do this thing. Hey, real quick, just letting you all know that I'm uploading more videos again on my gaming channel. So go check it out, subscribe, link is down below. Recently talked about BMX Triple X. It sucks, apparently was a thing. Go watch it. Okay, moving on. So. The creator behind Funny Pets is Ryuji Masuda. For the record, I go into greater detail about him in my Poppy video. But in a nutshell, the guy was given the opportunity to make 3D animated shorts on the Japanese children's TV channel called Kid Station. With a pitiful budget and only like three months leading up to broadcast, Ryuji and his three-person team, which by the way included his wife Wakako Masuda, well, they were able to pull off a victory and Poppy the Performer was well-received on the network. <laughs> Actually, according to sources, Ryuji did not even know about the targeted demographic of the channel and just made whatever he wanted. The results? Poppy the Performer, which ended up being quite the successful show for the network. After three seasons of Poppy, Ryuji would go on to work on a handful of other 3D animated projects, such as Mr. Stain on Junk Alley and Drive Car, though Funny Pets would be a return to form for him. In 2006, Funny Pets made its debut on Kid Station. And yeah, uh, it did not receive the same fanfare as Poppy. Now, it had a larger team and budget than Poppy, and visually looked more competent, but it still maintained a similar chaotic, unrefined tone. 
relatively simple visuals that rely more on writing and character chemistry with plenty of irreverent physical comedy to boot. It worked for Poppy, it should work for Funny Pets too, right? Well, to Kid Station, no. They apparently scrapped the show quickly. Hell, even the season 2 finale knew it was about to get the axe and ended on somewhat of a conclusive note. But why? Is Funny Pets ironically not funny? Was it unable to capture the lightning in a bottle that was Poppy the performer? Or is there something unappealing about this series that brought the executives of Kid Station to their senses? I mean, hey, this series still might be good here, but it probably shouldn't be airing on a kid's channel when it features content like this. Was this chocolate so good that it was worth having a gunfight over? Speaking of good food, ah, see, I got you again. Got you with the sponsor sneaking up on you. I'm just as unpredictable as this show. So a big shout out to this video sponsor, Factor. So I've been going hardcore gym mode these past few weeks, and I typically go during the middle of the day. After an hour or so of lifting heavy things, I head over to Tom so we can work on our project for our gaming channel. And let me tell you, after a workout, I am two things, starving and strapped for time. And that is where Factor comes to the rescue. I just grab a meal out of the fridge, toss it in the microwave or the much more preferred method of the oven, and boom, belly full, time saved, food good. Tom and I also got the keto variety, so lots of nutritious protein for us to munch on, which is a very welcome sight after a long workout. Give me that pork, baby. Uh, I want the grilled chicken too. We also got these tasty smoothies as well, which are like a fun treat to sip on during a meal or just a snack on throughout the day. It is genuinely appreciated to have easy meals with no prep that are locked and loaded after a gym session. Also, easy for logging my calories too and hitting my daily macros. All in all, I absolutely recommend Factor and their meals. Actually, Factor is now owned by HelloFresh, so I'm rocking both. I hit up HelloFresh meals so I can improve my cooking skills around dinner time. But when it comes to that like daily workout time crunch, Factor is my go-to choice. Both brands are great and are my kitchen champions. So head to go.factor75.com slash saberspark120 and use code saberspark120 to get $120 off. Get your hands on these tasty, time-efficient meals. That is, once again, go.factor75.com slash saberspark120. Hit up that link down below and check out Factor today. Do it, or Funny will beat the hell out of you. Unless you, like, are kind of into that. I know I am. I did not say that. Henry, do not put that in the video. So, what is Funny Pets about? The synopsis, just like Poppy, is surprisingly simple but is a powder keg of explosive possibilities. The series follows the episodic adventures of Crescent and Corona, a moon and a sun alien. According to the intro, they crash their ship on Earth next to the home of a girl named Funny. The two aliens become her pets and, uh, oh, oh my God. That's why the show is called Funny, P uh, <laughs> Funny Pets. You get it? Cause her name's Funny and they're the pets. Oh, and, 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 and you get it? Crescent, I would describe as the Squidward of the series, always getting dunked on and being denied from achieving his goals and dreams. Now, you would think that Corona would naturally be the SpongeBob to Crescent Squidward. Corona is more of the helpless baby of the group, who definitely gets more love than Crescent, but is also caught up in the unbridled chaos of the series. It's actually this running gag where Corona gets accidentally killed in episodes and we see his corpse just lying on the ground for the remainder of the time. It's, it's pretty dark, but really funny. So yeah, lots and lots of cartoony logic and physics and pain that is primarily aimed at Crescent with occasional collateral damage for Corona as well. But what about funny? Well, she's bubbly and likes to have fun but is also a bit of a narcissistic airhead. She's also kind of dense. Like there was an episode where Crescent chokes to death on an apple and Funny did not realize that he was dead. And instead of helping him out, 
she just shoves more food into his mouth and then like gets pissed at him for not eating. Funny too can also be somewhat selfish and cruel, but nowhere near the same degree as Poppy. Will her moon and sun friends suffer due to her blissful and sometimes deliberate ignorance? Oh, absolutely. But that's part of the fun. Like, I consider myself a cartoon junkie, but for the life of me, I could not predict the series of events in this show. In my stream, I'm trying to predict the outcomes only to see the plot go in a completely different direction. But that's part of the chaotic beauty of this series. On that note, here's a highlight reel of my crusade to watch the entire show in a single sitting. Enjoy. Okay, this is from the creator of Poppy the Performer. It came out like 2006. Oh. Would, you, would one call that lingerie a corset? Uh, what would you call it? I, I hope that Twitch doesn't ban me with, with whatever's about to happen. Okay. <laughs> yes! Yes! I, I love this show already! <laughs> Let's go! I can already tell that this is going to be chaotic. Just absolutely chaotic. We got like that Squidward SpongeBob energy going on. I just, <laughs> just dies. <laughs> she does a little bit of a strawberry shortcake. You're right. The mask falling off reminds me of the dog character. Are we about, are we about to see it? I wouldn't put it past this show. Yo. Uh, power, power move? This this moon is getting okay. <laughs> You handle it, just shoot the person. Uh, what are you going for? Her? Uh. We'll just get rid of that little bit of reality. And now it's a galaxy. Easy, uh, simple as that. I thought, I thought we were good. It feel pretty final, didn't it? GG. You know, I think Poppy the Performer died like four or five times in his show. Dead. Uh, what the fuck was that? Huh? Is she just gonna take the apple? Yeah. <laughs> she just doesn't care. Uh, yes, but CPR. As I say, keep it coming, mom. <laughs> but joke number two. What did I miss? Did he stab it? Oh, he stabbed his foot. Oh, some blood. Eyeball? 
Uh. Bye. <laughs> like no build up, it's just the train's there. Is that Shiva? Gotta be real, hot air balloons terrify me. Hate them. Hate them. For this reason, you never know if they'll do this. Oh. Alright, bye. <laughs> 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 like the Tom and Jerry gags, uh, I feel like this is kind of like in the same vein. Hit me! <laughs> nope. Try again. We need birds. <laughs> Like a bloody pulp. Is he dead? Is he gonna be an angel? Yeah. <laughs> Corona's getting bonus points. What you got there, Crescent? Yeah. That was good. Like, no, no, please, God, I beg of you, no. Oh, no, what's happening here? Dude, even in death, she doesn't care. She doesn't care! <laughs> what's happening here? Okay, there's two more chances. You gotta make a count. You got to make a count. First pipe. Or he eats it, you know. I said, oh Lord Jesus, this is a fire. I can't predict the show. I, I can't. I, I think it's gonna happen, it never happens. It just does its own thing. <laughs> what? It happens, it happens to the best of us. <laughs> Because again, like my my entire objective here is that, that like a lot of the reviews for this show were negative, and as Vork discovered, the show got canceled because of just negative reviews. And I'm here to say that they were wrong. That this show is amazing. That they didn't they, they didn't have their third eye open. They they lacked the the refined palate to enjoy true art. Wow. <laughs> that's 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 good. I, I, love, <laughs> I love that. I love what <laughs> here's the plan. I shoot you. Let me set it up. Bam. Oh, shot him too soon. He's dead. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's gonna kill him, isn't it? <laughs> Again. I, I, I can never guess. It's 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 too powerful. <laughs> the math. <laughs> so that's pretty good. The math. <laughs> All right. Well, this has a good sense of humor. <laughs> but it's easy. He's gonna start like losing it here. Oh my God! Who, is handsome boy? Who is he? Smitten. Wow. It's like Comey with the her little breathing sound effects. But that's it. That's it. Chain? I mean... <laughs> no, what? Literally, I, I can't? Um... <laughs> oh, man, it's... 
too powerful. <laughs> Crescent getting shot on the ground. Little baby hands. <laughs> Mom did it again. <laughs> so, did Funny Pets live up to the same hype? chaos and standards of popular performer? Or are these vicious reviews valid in their criticism? Was this three hour stream of mine all for nothing? Oh God, I hope not, cause I only have a few brain cells left to spare at this point. I blame you, Alpha and Omega. Here's the thing, in my opinion, Funny Pets is a lesser version of Poppy the Performer. Now does that mean that it's bad? No. But Poppy beats Funny Pets in virtually every category except for music and animation quality. But we'll get to that here in a bit. Let's start off with the characters. Crescent and Corona, in my opinion, are just less interesting versions of Poppy and Kitamono. Now at first, I was a little apprehensive when it came to Crescent, thinking, oh no, this guy is going to be annoying, isn't he? Which wasn't the case. But I wasn't in love with him either. And the same can be said for Corona too. Both are fun with their dynamic, especially when funny is thrown into the equation. But the unbridled wrath that came from the shenanigans between Poppy and Kitamono are much more entertaining to me. Also, I'm not much of a fan of Crescent's toothy mouth design, and his sound effects and voice acting are a bit grating at times. <laughs> That's what he sounds like. Though I gotta say, Corona's mouth being this portal into space was a cool feature and plot device. Funny herself was fine, as far as her personality goes, but I was kind of hoping for a bit more from her. There wasn't a girl character in Poppy, so I was excited to see what Funny could bring to the table here. The results? Eh, nothing of massive substance, but nothing horrendous either. Just a ditzy girl who likes to get her way and also brings the pain when needed. She effectively serves as the foil to Crescent's erratic behavior, and is also a bit of a wild card herself but there isn't anything especially amazing about her character. Her design though is fine, you know, it's, it's okay. Though she looks like she's an 18 plus version of a strawberry shortcake character. Now, Funny Pets does have more competent animation when it comes to quality. With its backgrounds, its textures, its designs, its movement, they're much more fluid and complex. Also, its soundtrack is much better. I, I guess they had more than a, a thousand dollar budget this time around. But to me, Poppy had the more interesting characters in regards to its designs and their chemistry. There's just something about these clowns going into rage mode that make me laugh hard. Both shows respectively had great comedic timing with their physical comedy and gags and subverting of expectations and dark humor. Funny Pets gave me a lot of big laughs, no doubt about that. And again, it channeled the same energy as Poppy with characters who are cute on the outside, but violent on the inside. Aww, a cute little sun alien with a smiling girl who's wearing a, a corset? That's kind of weird. Oh, you no, know, what, whatever. Okay, let's see what happens next. <laughs> In conclusion, I can safely say that I prefer Poppy the Performer over Funny Pets, but that does not mean it's bad. There were plenty of moments that made me laugh, and I had a fun time exploring a series that treads the same chaotic path as Poppy. Yeah, it doesn't hit as well when it comes to the chemistry as Poppy, and the characters and their designs aren't as appealing either, but I had fun watching it nonetheless. Also. Props to the animation team for upping their game and quality while also still maintaining a level of simplicity for Funny Pets. If the series was overly animated, it would lose a lot of its charm. It being simple and rough around the edges adds so much more to its overall tone and experience. Also, I can't deny that knowing this series aired on a kid's network just makes the series that much more amusing to me. So when it comes to the reviews for Funny Pets, are they too harsh? Yes, I think they are, but I totally understand where those reviewers are coming from. 
These reviewers see a crude, minimal effort, low quality show with derivative jokes and unlikable characters. But what I see is top notch slapstick comedy that takes inspiration from Looney Tunes, but floors the pedal when it comes to irreverent violence. The teams who made both shows did not have much to work with when it came to resources, but they made the most of what they had and created two very fun shows. <laughs> Though to be fair, I have to remind myself daily that my particular brand of humor is very unorthodox compared to the majority of other people out there. I guess that's just an outcome from my brain melting after reviewing bad movies for over half a decade. So. If you're looking for clever, physical comedy with great timing and sassy characters that straddle the fence when it comes to adult humor, go check out Funny Pets and Poppy the Performer. If not, then just go complain about it online in your forum board. I'm sure that everyone will care. This video is the biggest load of hoo-ha I've ever seen. Why do you insist we watch this stupid thing? Am I the only one who understands the complexities of this ambitious cinematic masterpiece? This movie isn't stupid! You're stupid! <laughs> oh, Billy, why you gotta be like that? <laughs>